Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to worship. Nice to be together. Hope you had a good week. Um, I had midterms this week, so school is done. I have a lot of grading to do, but school is done. So that's all right. Uh, I'm usually a, a pretty gracious grader. You know me at all. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to worship. Glad you're here. Uh, glad to be together. We've got the tree, so that's kind of fun. I uh, hope you can stick around and help decorate afterwards. A um, couple things. One is uh, yesterday, I don't know, maybe you participated in this in your town, but uh, we had uh, reeds across America in our town. So we put out about 700 reeds, I think, at different uh, graves of, of veterans who had died. So um, I got to play some in front of somebody from the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the Civil War, and three people I had buried. So that was kind of a, a neat piece. And then we had a service on the green I got to lead. Um, but Reads Across America, which started, I think, in the 90s, um, it took them, I think, from 92 to 2012 to lay a million reads around the country, which I think that's a lot of reads. Uh, yesterday, in all 50 states, and I think 25 or 26 countries, they laid like two and a half, almost three million reads. So that's, that's a lot of trees. They all come from Maine. But anyway, that was cool. If you get a chance in the future to participate in it, it was kind of neat. And uh, also just kind of a nice way to be with people. So it was great. Um, hope we can be together with me on Christmas Eve. So that's at 3 o'clock. Hope you can be here. It'll be fun. Uh, and uh, as I've talked to a few of you before, worship, this is my last Sunday, for, at least for now, um, with, with you all. So I just wanted to say uh, what a wonderful year it's been, and thank you. Uh, it's, it's been great to uh, get to know you and worship with you and be faithful together and figure out what's God's got in store for us. And uh, I've enjoyed it very much, so, so thank you for that. So with that, why don't we turn to uh, something flammable. George is gonna do our Advent wreath this morning by lighting the candles, not the wreath. Oh, George is disappointed. Well, you could have a fire inside. So. <laughs> All right, let's stand as we hear today's gospel. Let's say together, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and they named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. So I don't know if you've had this experience. I have experienced it many times, where you, you wake up in the morning, or maybe you wake up in the middle of the night, and you have no idea where you are, what you're doing, or how you got there. Uh, my daughter had a sleepover on Friday night. She texted us Saturday morning, and she reminded me of this. Um, she said she, you know, they were having a good time. She woke up in the middle of the night and almost panicked because she had no idea where she was. 
And then all of a sudden in that moment, like her wits came about her and she, remind, she was reminded that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm here and I'm with my friends and I'm safe. And it was like one of those things. Uh, when I was a kid, probably 10, 11, 12, what is that, fourth through sixth grade-ish, that was kind of my big growth spurt uh, age. And uh, during those years, I was a sleepwalker. So sometimes I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I wouldn't have my covers and I'd be shivering and I'd look around for them and I'd find them in the kitchen. Or uh, sometimes I'd wake up and I'd be on the couch. And probably the most dramatic of them all is uh, one morning I woke up and I was lying on the basement floor with my pillow and my covers downstairs, totally away from everybody else in my bedroom. I had no idea how I got there. And when that happens and you wake up, you're just, what's going on? Where am I? What am I doing? How'd I get here? It's very disconcerting, very disorienting. Uh, it happens. There are times when I go out for, I haven't done this, I must admit, lately, but uh, when you go out for like a late night, uh, early morning, depending on your perspective, uh, fire call. The thing rings, you get your shoes and your keys and you go. Now the ones where something's really happening, you can't get back to sleep because you're wired. Uh, but when it's really nothing and it's just kind of a false alarm, you, you get done, you put everything away, you come back, you slip in, in the back into bed, and in the morning you say to yourself, did I go out last night? Was that something I really, did that happen? Uh, it's one of those things. And maybe you don't remember it, uh, but I kind of remember it on the other end when my kids were little. You know, you'd be driving back home from someplace and they clunk out in the back seat. And then when you get home, you do everything you can to like unclip them from the car seat ever so carefully and put them on your shoulder and get them in the bed. And I don't remember what they'd say in the morning, but it has to be kind of weird being in one place, getting in the car and waking up in your bed in the morning. Uh, it's a little disconcerting, it's disorienting. Uh, it happens, right? I'm wondering, you know, hearing this story again, about Joseph and his, his dream, if he experienced this at all. Uh, did that happen? Did an angel really visit me last night? Uh, did he really tell me not to, to be afraid? Uh, did he really say to name him Jesus? Did he really say that God is, is with us no matter what? Did that, that really happen? Or maybe I was just dreaming. Uh, think about that. When we think about dreams, at least in a modern way, we're, we're kind of dismissive of, of them most of the time, right? Oh, that was just a dream, right? That didn't really happen. Uh, or we psychologize them. I mean, I'm not a psychology uh, expert, but experientially I could say, you know, when I'm really stressed out about something, or if I have to make a really big decision about something, or if I've had a conversation that left me thinking, boy, I shouldn't have said that, I need to talk to them tomorrow. Uh, I dream about it all night long over and over and over and over and over again. And maybe there is something to your, your mind, your body, your soul, your heart, everything, needing to process something that's happened. And I wonder if at least on some little level, maybe Joseph is, is doing that. He just had this bomb dropped on him, right? Like, you're gonna be a father, except you know you're not really the father. And what are you gonna do about that? And how's it gonna affect you and your family? and uh, marry who you're engaged to be with, and the future you had planned, uh, and, and your own honor, and, and her dignity, and what does that mean in that culture? And wow, that's a lot. I mean, maybe it was just to take plane over and over and over again. Except the thing is, in the Bible, when somebody dreams something, it's always more than that. It's always this, this way that God is kind of leading you someplace. Or, or sharing some information you don't know about yet that everybody else needs to know. I think of, uh, in particular, Joseph's namesake from Genesis, right? He has all of these dreams throughout his story as one bad thing after the next seems to happen to the poor guy. But it's, it's his dreams that keep him connected and keep him faithful. It keeps it pushing him forward to say, yeah, okay, God is, is still with me and is still taking me somewhere and is still... Uh, by my side through all of this and in the midst of all the things that had happened to him the way his his brothers treated him uh, In the end he ends up helping them and forgiving them uh, And it's because of these dreams he has all along the way uh, Maybe there's something to that in a way that we don't normally see in these stories So what is being shared with Joseph here? Uh, 
There's a lot going on in these first little verses of Matthew's gospel. Uh, what we didn't hear is the introduction, which is a long list of names, which usually when people are reading those in the Bible, they say, okay, I'm done. Um, but it's all setting up, who is this Jesus that's coming to be among us? And all those names connect them to all these people throughout the whole story. Uh, and if you know those names, or if you hear a couple of them go, oh, I remember that, uh, all of a sudden it clues you in is, into what is happening. And Joseph, who is now a, the culmination of that story, and Mary, who's coming in too, are going to be the ones to fulfill this uh, promise from Isaiah to bring this child who will lead them, this one who will be the Prince of Peace, the one who comes uh, from a virgin, who's going to, to redeem his people. And somehow this, this little couple in this little backwater of the country in this huge empire are going to be at the center of the story. And of course there's all, a million things that can go wrong. And of course there's this situation because in this dream, first of all, what Joseph hears is not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. But this is all, all part of the roadmap God's already been laying out for centuries and you are part of that story now. And I need you to help us out. Take care of Mary. Take care of this child who's come. Uh, and what a powerful endeavor that, that could be. Uh, disorienting, I would think. Waking up, did that really happen? I, I don't know. But at the same time, it also seems to give Joseph some clarity, doesn't it? Uh, because we're told that he does exactly what the angel uh, inspires him to do. There's two names that the angel tells him to do something with. Uh, first, he tells him to name him Jesus, which, of course, we know that name inside and out, uh, connected to this phrase, he will save his people from their sins. Uh, if you're any bit of a linguist, uh, the name Jesus and the name Joshua are the same name. Uh, one's Greek, one's Hebrew, but it's the same name. They both mean uh, to save. Uh, think of Joshua from the Old Testament. What did he do? He led the people into the promised land, into the kingdom that was promised to them for all of these these ages uh, and it tears down the walls of, of Jericho and, and the whole bit uh, and who is Jesus that comes uh, he leads all of us as his people into a different kind of kingdom not one with, with borders and um, you know protections and laws and armies and all that stuff uh, it's, it's about compassion it's about uh, love it's about uh, God's faithfulness to us even when we really mess up and even when we doubt ourselves the most. Uh, being there in the midst of it. Think of all these stories we have of Jesus throughout the Gospels. It's always connected with people that seem to be on the outs, either because they're, they're unwell or they are part of some taboo of, of society or they just uh, they haven't been included. And somehow uh, through those, those moments of Jesus teaching and healing and, and casting aside that which is evil, uh, he invites them to come and be a part of this thing I'm doing. And we're going to call it the kingdom of God. And he tears down the dividing walls between us, uh, Ephesians tells us. All those things that keep us from one another. And think of the world in which we live in that's full of divisions. And it's full of ways people aren't invited to participate. And Jesus comes to kind of flip that around and do it in another way. And then he also calls on this prophet from Isaiah and says, Remember, he's also to be called Emmanuel means God's with us. And we think to ourselves, okay, that makes sense. Well, uh, we, we talk about that all the time, right? That God's always with us no matter what happens, uh, through thick and thin. I wonder if we believe it, though. I mean, don't we kind of really more often think of God as kind of far off and we're kind of left to our own devices and maybe God will look down on me and it'll be okay or maybe, maybe not today. I'm ready to get zapped. You know, like we, we think of these things. Uh, and at the same time, the promise is... Uh, God is with us. And if you think of the Jesus story, what is it about and where does it culminate? It culminates not with uh, uh, everybody getting it right and everybody you know, holding hands and, and singing kumbaya. It's all about uh, death. It's about suffering. It's about uh, how it seems to all fall apart. And those are exactly the moments when Jesus meets us, when we doubt it the most, right? That's, that's where he is. He's on the cross with us, beside us. And somehow in, in our death and in his death, there's a transformation that happens where, where life happens, where something new is going to happen. And if we've got our, our eyes open and our ears open, and maybe even we dream a little bit, uh, we can start to envision that happening even now uh, here in our lives. 
What this story inspires me to think about, really, especially as we are here now almost entering 2023 and, and Christmas is, is right around the corner, is to, to think about Joseph and to think about what would it mean to dare to dream? Uh, because I don't know if we have for some time. Uh, you know when you're really tired and you just clunk out and it feels like you, you, you slept for five minutes and it's over? And you think, oh, geez, uh, what happened? I mean, did your brain, your body, your soul, your heart, your mind, did any of it process anything? Uh, but I think we, we're, we're called to dare to dream, uh, especially as we enter into kind of the, the world that is ahead of us. We need to process it. Uh, sometimes you think of the last couple years in particular. Uh, was it anything more than trauma we've all experienced? Uh, I think of traumas I've experienced. Uh, it's going to be 10 years ago in February. I had a terrible sledding accident where I, I injured my head. I ran head first into a tree. Um, and it was awful and it was bad, and thankfully I'm okay. Uh, but, but for that, those moments, it was very, very scary. And in those weeks and months that followed, as I was you know, at home kind of recovering in the neck brace and not working and, and wondering what the future would hold, I dreamt about it every night. And I don't know if you ever dream with sound. Um, I don't know if I ever have before, but I knew I did then because I would wake up every time I would dream this dream to that cracking noise when I ran into that tree and I'd be in a cold sweat. Uh, and you think, okay, have, have we done that? And what it's meant over the last couple of years. Uh, we've been in kind of survival mode, not just as you know, grace, but as, as people and living in this world. Uh, what does it mean to, to open ourselves again to think, okay, God might be doing something here. Where's the Spirit pushing us to next? Uh, what might this look like as we try to be faithful, as we try to take some risks in a way maybe we haven't in some time? Uh, it's, it's time to dream. It's time to dream a little bit. Uh, think of what this means that God saves us. Uh, we have this beautiful story of Christmas that we love and cherish, and we're going to tell again uh, and again and again and again. Uh, of course, it's, it's centered on, on Mary and Joseph and, and that little holy family, but we know it doesn't stop there, right? Uh, we have those stinky shepherds that come in with their candy canes, I mean their hooks, uh, and they, they come and they, they share what they've experienced. Uh, they, they share the, the song with the angels. They, they go and they tell it on the mountain and they share good news around them. Uh, they're open to it. Uh, they dreamt a little bit, I want to think, uh, about where God was using them and what that might mean for them. Uh, and we, we have this amazing promise of, of God being with us, right? Uh, of what that might actually look like, of, of being people of, of compassion and mercy and grace and love in the world. And I've seen it with you all over this past year, the way you care for each other, the way you, you take care of each other, the way you, you look out when somebody's not here, the way you, you, you pray for each other and, and get your hands dirty with each other. It's, it's beautiful, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and what does that mean as we live that in a way beyond ourselves? Maybe God is calling us uh, to something beyond the, the walls of Bethlehem and into the wider world. It's time to dream a little bit. So I haven't really shared this much uh, I've thought about it a lot, obviously, but I have not uh, shared it in any kind of real way. So I left uh, St. Paul, my last church, in August of 2021 uh, with good reasons, right? I had this amazing opportunity to, to be at Notre Dame and teach and do something I'd always wanted to do. And at least I thought, you know, put my gifts to use in a, in a great way. And wouldn't that be wonderful? And it, it is. It's great. Uh, but there was another side of that whole conversation, too. And that's when, when I left that church. Again, think about this. It was August of 21. So it was right when we kind of thought, maybe this is all ending, this pandemic thing. And it was also gearing up to strike back with a vengeance. And everybody was still very, very, very uh, anxious and worried. Disoriented, right? We're all waking up from this thing from a couple years. Do you still do this? He said, like, what year did that happen? Uh, you know, 19, 20, 21, they all kind of blend together after a while. Uh, and you start thinking, ah, what's the future hold? And I left that place feeling 
lost in the wind somehow. Uh, I mean, I knew what I was doing. I felt called to it. I, I knew it was it was going to be good. But at the same time, that whole fall, I kind of felt like, well, where do I where do I belong now? I don't know. Uh, where am I going? Uh, what what does this look like? You know, I've done the pastor thing so much, it's hard to think about things another way. And all of a sudden, I had this uh, phone call from the synod office from uh, Pastor Wilco, who we know who's been here. He's like, "Would you come to Grace?" And what a wonderful year I've had with you. I mean, really, I mean that uh, heartfelt. Uh, I've watched you dream a little bit. I, I've dreamt with you. I mean, there was a time when I left my church in August and it was maybe like, you know, September or October. I thought, boy, am I ever gonna be at church again? I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe not up front anymore. Uh, is there a place I could fit in somewhere? I don't know. Uh, we'll just kind of see what happens. And then you've been such a gift to me. Uh, so I'm just so grateful to you uh, for that, the way you've welcomed me in and made you a part of your jokes and uh, you laughed at my corny things I do sometimes, and or at least, you know, not. Uh, and it, it's just wonderful. And I've, I've watched you dream about not just how do we survive, but what do we do? Uh, how are we going to carry this thing forward? Where are we going to go? Where is God pushing us? Uh, and it's scary and it's, you know, anxiety provoking. Of course it is. Uh, and at the same time, isn't dreaming about uh, those risks that are out there and saying, maybe, maybe we could do this after all. And it is about thinking beyond yourself. And you've been doing such a great job of that in these last uh, few weeks and months of all these little projects you've had going around. And I think, boy, if all our churches could do this, well, that'd be wonderful, uh, right? I mean, holy cow. You know, you think of uh, all these big things you always see. Uh, look at how great they are over there. And look at how big this thing is. And look at that shiny billboard. But you know, the church isn't about that, is it? Uh, it's, it's about hearing that promise that meets you in that moment and, and stirs something up a little bit. Uh, for Joseph, it's that dream. When you think, my world is falling apart, I wanna do the right thing, I'm not sure how to do it, maybe I just step back and that'll be it. And at the same time, God says, mm, maybe not. <laughs>